The Center for Compassion and Altruism Research and Education, CCARE, we call it CCARE, in a nutshell is to explore the brain basis, the neural networks responsible in the human brain for compassion, empathy, altruism, to understand those so well that we can uh, really deduce the mechanisms that underlie the operations of those circuits and to know it really well so that we can actually enhance compassion practices, enhance altruistic behavior uh, in people. The mission is to look at it not from strictly the viewpoint of a neuroscientist but to look at it f in a multidisciplinary fashion incorporating philosophy, primatology, psychology, neuroeconomics, and neuroscientists so that you really have a global view to really understand this on a very deep level. We put this also in the context of a visit by the Dalai Lama and he had uh, been at Stanford in October of 2005 and if you know anything about the Dalai Lama one of the things you know not only is his life centered around the promotion of compassion and universal ethics and morals if you will but he has had a long-standing interest in neuroscience and how the brain works. Why bother with contemplatives? I mean, this is just neuroscience after all. Well, it is. We do a different kind of neuroscience than they do. Contemplative traditions allow one to think about what they think about. It's first-person observation. It's thinking about what you think about. That's what contemplatives do. And they do it very well, and they train and train and train, and they practice and practice, and pretty soon, they're very good at controlling their thought processes. And that evokes a better sense of self. And if you train properly, so I'm told, uh, you can enhance your own ability to be compassionate. There are techniques, functional magnetic resonance imaging, which allows us to look at the areas in the brain which are demonstrating increased metabolic activity and which appear to correlate with the neuroanatomic bases of some of these behaviors. Magnetoencephalography, which allows you also to look at the focused electrical activity in the brain, which also correlates with the metabolic activity, obviously. Wouldn't it be exciting to think that we learn enough about the brain basis of compassion that we could teach it to five-year-olds or 50-year-olds and do it in a way that didn't require that they go off to a monastery someplace for 10 years. Here, if we do this correctly and it comes out as we have impressions that it probably will, this could have a huge impact uh, on thousands of people, if not millions of people. This is really important stuff, you know? I mean, I'm not going to stop studying growth factors and cells and Alzheimer's disease and Down syndrome. But this is a very cool thing to try to do. And quite frankly, this resonates with people. This topic resonates with people in a way that a lot of other topics don't. People want to know about compassion. Really, really good people and really, really troubled people and really, really rich and really, really poor people all want to know about compassion. And so I think we've hit a nerve, so to speak, and we're going to play that out. We're going to see what we can do to really understand who we are and what we're here for. The preceding program is copyrighted by the Board of Trustees of the Leland Stanford Junior University. Please visit us at med.stanford.edu.